Uh, well, we added uh, wings, larger wings to the dragon, uh, and they've got uh, flame poofers on them. Yeah, it's still breeze fire. Now it's got eight poofers to make musical notes. Simmer and the Berserkador Dragon, which he has added Burninator. The Burninator was a sculpture that Lummox from Disaster Area produced back in 2010 on the back of his truck, and it looks like it's been repurposed as uh, a piece of the wings, the new wings. So what I do, what I do is recycle. I recycle all kinds of burner projects and they give them a new life. So that's what I do, you know. So this is our new improved dragon. Uh, Nathan Sanchi helped me uh, put uh, a total of eight poofers on the wings of this dragon. Now, now we have a fully executable dragon with lots and lots of fire. Fire is operated by a little piano device. Each, each poofer has its own tone, so you can actually play musical. It's a musical instrument as well as a fire toy. It's a very simple keyboard, only eight keys, but uh, you can play simple tunes like Mary Had a Little Lamb or whatever you want on that. It is interactive if you uh, know how to work a piano keyboard. So this is Lumiere. This is the 10th anniversary of Lumiere and um, we have 11 locations this year. Uh, a lot of BC artists. We have of the 29 installations, 20 of them are local. So my passion is literally showing off my friend's art. That's literally what I love doing. I find it's a shame that so often the things that we build locally have nowhere to go. So I love the idea that I can help to create a space that they can actually show things to the general public and that people can interact with their art outside of the festival circuit. I just want them to play. Just come play with art. It's free and you can play, you can make things, you can, you can eat things.
Stephanie, what brings you out? Well, this is my neighborhood. These are my friends that have organized it. I got my buddies. Yeah, so like, honestly, it's the community. Well, tell, yeah. the, tell, tell the people. It's the community, it's the lights, it's the fire, it's the fun, and it's bringing people together from everywhere. Fire. It's fire. It's, it's fire. fire. <laughs> Man, that's our that's our hello fellow kids moment. How old are we? <laughs> hey fellow kids. Hi children. Take goodbye, Gracie. Bye, Gracie! <laughs>
you can see people in the background playing with it. It's making a cacophony of weird, strange noises. Um, I like to make interactive pieces and I wanted to make something that was a little more fun and sculptural and is, is like a real object. So I wanted something very organic. So these are kind of trees and they kind of fruits on them, but the fruits are alive and electric and have lights in them. It's pretty attractive and people, particularly small people, want to come up and touch it. Although one thing I learned, the positioning some of the little sensors at kid level was a pretty good idea and is working out pretty well so far because kids need to have something to touch and they really like to trigger stuff. What I think is absolutely hilarious is that everybody is walking th through this structure and everybody has exactly the same pose. They're walking down the center with their cell phones uh, straight up. So you're probably gonna have about 10,000 shots of people walking through this straight on with their cell phones up. But it's kind of weird because it looks like this weird zombie. So it looks like an assembly line of people. I kind of half expect little arms to come down and start adding plates and mechanical devices to them. So by the time they get out, there'll be a full cyborg. Yeah, I love this thing. It's a, uh, it really has a big Battlestar Galactica vibe. So I want to, want to launch my Viper and uh, launch my Viper and take on the Cylons and have really badly feathered hair in that 1970s look. Um, so it's not a Cylon, it's not a Ballastar Galactica launcher. Unfortunately, no. No, okay. It's just a tunnel. Well, but it looks I like mean, I'm, I'm ready to fight Cylons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get in my maybe, Raptor and then fly through. Maybe the artist was inspired by that. Yeah, okay, this thing is uh, Maybe. Do you wanna come try it? All right. No. So which one uh, uh, kills everybody inside? Which one? I would say it would be this one. Okay. That's, okay. Okay. That's the button. Okay. This one. Okay. The whirling blades. The flamethrowers. This is probably the flamethrowers. I think everything is this button. Yeah, and these are just for decoration. Right. Okay. Yeah. They don't Most do anything. <laughs> So that's a rainbow. Oh. These are animations and okay. this is like solid color. And how do I fire everybody in the cannon out to uh, the Bowen Island? The big history eraser button? Yeah, there's a 
don't want to like that. <laughs> yeah. No flamethrowers? Yeah. <laughs> no flamethrowers? No. How about, yet. how about whirling blades? We'll give, we'll, we'll give a request to the artist. No whirling blades, no flamethrowers, and I can't even shoot the people out to Bowen Island. What kind of doomsday weapon is this? The League of Evil is going to hear about this. I think I, as a as a visual artist myself and a videographer, have a have a duty to document as much creativity as humanly possible, to create uh, and to document large scale art, large scale art installations, and to uh, bring to light people bringing things to the light. I guess it's very important uh, that we support local arts, and I think it's important that the city comes alive with light sculptures and light installations and things to do downtown, things to do in this no fun city. And uh, I guess I am a sucker, sucker for beautiful things and blinky lights and colorful displays that penetrate the gloom that is uh, usually living in the city of Vancouver. So that's going to wrap it up for me for this video. But I thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.